Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of In the Pit with Lobo Tigre. Our victim of the day is Jack Perkins. He's investor relations with America's Gold and Silver, an ambitious name for a company. So Jack, why don't you go ahead and give us the overview of what you're doing and then I'll get into some questions. Wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, America's Gold and Silver uh, is a North American precious metals producer. We have three assets, uh, one in Idaho, one in Mexico, and we have the Relief Cane Open Pit Gold Project in Nevada, which we expect to pour first gold at next month. That was an admirably concise overview. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. so obviously the big story is the new mine coming online, yep. but let's talk about your existing sure. operations. You're a producer. Are you making money, yes or no, and if? Yeah, as of our second quarter financials, we had 15 million in, in revenue uh, and a loss of about 8 million, so uh, we did not have a, a profitable Q2. Uh, we do expect that to change as we bring Relief King in online. That's expected to produce 90,000 ounces, uh, life of mine average, uh, at about 800 all in sustaining costs. So significant margins at Relief Canyon, and we think that's what's gonna make us a profitable company. All right, um, but before we move on to yep. Relief Canyon, and I do have sure. questions about that, uh, you have Idaho Silver, and those yes. are famous for being sort of hand-to-mouth mines. You never have years of reserves because right. of you know, chasing these narrow veins. Uh, but you have Eric Sprott stepping up to the plate, yes. we understand, with a, a major cash infusion to mm -hmm. upgrade that. Um, do you think that's going to make that mine profit? I mean, clearly you do or you wouldn't spend the money. Yeah, Talk absolutely. us through that. Yeah, sure. So the Galena mine in Idaho has not had a significant investment from America's gold and silver uh, in many years. Uh, we're doing a joint venture with Eric Sprott. It's a 60-40 joint venture putting $25 million into the project. Uh, $7.5 million of that is going to go to exploration. All of our drilling ends in ore and we believe there's uh, significant potential uh, deeper. Um, and then the balance will go towards developing new stopes to access the ore and uh, recapitalizing the equipment to bring down costs and increase production. All right, and if all goes well, yeah. <laughs> it never does, but reasonably well, uh, when, when, would this, when would the turnaround in that mine be complete? Yeah, we'll see uh, this uh, start over the next year. Um, our $5 million commitment for that joint venture doesn't come in until the end of 2020, and so I think that you'll start to see results there in 2020. All right. And in Mexico, is that one operationally profitable? Yes, it is. Yeah. In Mexico, we have a very profitable mine, the Coastal Mine. It's operating uh, at about all in sustained costs of negative $1.49, uh, and that's largely due to zinc and uh, lead by product credits. All right. Well, uh, so that's... Arm-waving question there. Yeah. You, I mean, you, the company can't control lead and zinc prices, but sure. if we're worried about the economy, mm -hmm. um, you know, ha let me rephrase it, because you're not responsible for the global economy. If lead yeah. and zinc prices come off, you can't do anything about right. that. Um, but how low can they go before you have a problem there? Well, actually, uh, it's, a, it's a good question, but the answer is probably not what you're going to expect. Okay. So yeah. we have a, a, an interesting deposit there. When silver prices were low, we were mining the high-grade lead and the high-grade zinc. Now as we're seeing silver prices come up, we're transitioning to the higher grade silver areas of the mine. So I think that... Uh, okay, the, I've, I've seen that yeah. before. So you have zones. So you have, yeah, we have uh, zones. internal optionality, we might say. Exactly, yeah. Where we can go to this more silver rich sense. Well, that's mm -hmm. very good. Okay, yeah. so you expect that to maintain operational profitability going forward Absolutely, as you yes. come up to speed. As a matter of fact, we expect it to increase, uh, increase silver production as we go into the silver, uh, high grade silver, silver zones. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in the next two years, we'll be going into the EC120 zone, which is uh, our highest grade silver zone in that, in that uh, mine. Okay, and what's the guidance for annual production? Uh, we don't. We haven't put out guidance for annual production there yet. All right. No. More silver. More silver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, for EC one twenty, we're looking at um, for memory serves about two and a half additional, uh, two and a half million additional ounces of silver. Yeah. And right. currently, we're producing about uh, a million ounces there. Okay. So talk to us about Nevada. You got some money from Sandstorm. You yep. built a mine now. Uh, everything going according to plan. Any surprises? Um, no, actually, we announced the close of the Pershing Gold transaction in April, and concurrent with that, we announced a financing package for about $42 million to bring uh, Relief Canyon into production. Since then, we've been moving at a rapid pace to build out the leach pads, put in the uh, crusher, put in the conveyors, and we expect to pour first gold there next month. First gold. Yep. It's always such an exciting moment. All right. Um, I don't have the feasibility numbers mm -hmm. off to my head. Was there a feasibility study? Yeah, what do we yeah we've, done, we've done a, a feasibility there. Uh, we're looking to produce um, at about 800 all in sustaining costs. Uh, life of mine, average production is 90,000 ounces a year. 
for how many years? Six years. Six years. And what's the exploration potential? So we have about 30,000 ounces, uh, sorry, 30,000 acres uh, of land in or around the mine mm -hmm. site. Uh, it's only been about 20% explored. And the deposit itself is open in three directions. So once we're producing cash, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be putting some more into exploration out there. All right, so it's still open. The, yep, the still plan open. is definitely bootstrap, start with this one, mm -hmm. and then go from there. Yep. All right. And you say everything's going well. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll know in a month, I guess. You'll be starting. Yeah. What's the plan ramp up? You know, you, you never have everything dialed in from the beginning. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we'll be uh, putting uh, ore on the pad second week in November. Uh, it's a five-week leach cycle, so that's why we're, we're planning on December uh, first gold pour. And then it'll take us about a quarter to get up to full commercial production. So we expect full commercial production at the end of Q1. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. And so um, we were operationally profitable in Mexico. We lost money mm -hmm. in Idaho. We expect to make money in Nevada very Correct. soon. Yeah. What's the cash in the bank like? Are we, do we have a pad and a cushion there for the ramp up phase or? Yeah, we had about uh, six million in the bank as, as of the end of Q2. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we expect uh, Relief King to be cash flowing more or less immediately uh, mm -hmm. as, we, as we bring that up. So, um, so yeah, and, and Relief Cane, as I said, is also fully um, financed to production. So we don't have to go out and raise more money to, to get this project uh, in motion. All right, so the proof will be in the pudding. We'll see yeah. soon. I don't have any more questions. I mean, it's really, we'll yeah. see what happens when the gold comes out of the mine. Absolutely, yeah. All right, yeah. thank you very much. Hey, thank you very much.